Middle East tension continues to buoy gold with gold gaining for a fifth straight week, closing up 1.5% this week on Friday, April 19th, 2024. Let me share my screen. Middle East tension continues to buoy gold, overriding the inverse correlation that gold traditionally has with the U.S. dollar and treasury yields. Both have also been higher over the last two weeks in a, a flight to safe haven, just like gold. And gold is also ignoring the effects of the U.S. debt and stickier inflation right now. It's all been about what's been happening in the Middle East. In this brief gold market commentary, we're going to discuss just a little bit the Middle East tension and how it's buoying gold with gold bumping up against $2,400 an ounce and silver bumping up $29 an ounce. Israel and Iran, as you all know, have exchanged limited direct fire for the first time. We'll go over the latest charts for gold and silver. And we'll also talk about uh, the $20 St. Gaudens in gem quality MS65 condition. Another great coin in the vintage U.S gold coin sector that's experiencing low premiums right now due to the surging gold price. A week after Iran fired a salvo of about 300 drones and cruise missiles at Israel, uh, the other shoe dropped last night with Israel firing back at Iran, specifically targeting an air defense system for the Iranian nuclear site. Both sides have downplayed their direct fire exchanges yet both have been tactical in these exchanges. It's possible Iran was testing Israel's air defenses, which were augmented by the US, Great Britain, Jordan, and indirectly by Saudi Arabia, among others, uh, while Israel has targeted the air defense radar site protecting the Natanz nuclear complex in Isfahan. Israel saying, hey, we can get at it if we want to. And by taking out the radar defense, they may be setting up for a, another strike if necessary. So while the tension is de-escalating a little bit based on their posture and language, both sides seem to be ready to go at each other again if necessary. The good news is Iran's firing capabilities are apparently limited by the number of launchers they have, which is just a couple of hundred. But unfortunately for Israel, Iran's proxy Hezbollah still possesses a high degree of threat to Israel being right on the northern border of with, in Lebanon with thousands of missiles close and at their disposal. You know, Israel's already fighting wars on two fronts, both in Gaza and with limited ex exchanges with Hezbollah. So it's good that they're not entering into a third new front with Iran directly. Both sides have been able to save a little face with these tit for tat salvos that they've gone through. And both are now downplaying uh, these exchanges. So hopefully the tension will start to ease a bit from here. Time will tell. Let's see how this is affecting the gold price. Well, gold has been climbing a wall of worry up steadily over the last two months, as you know. I've indicated uh, where this whole tit-for-tat exchange really started when, when I, Israel took out uh, an Iranian general and four others at a consulate in Syria. A couple of weeks ago, the gold price then was 2260. And today, uh, on the June contract, uh, we've been as high as about 2408. As you can see at the top right of the chart, this is not the spot market. This is the June contract price, which is a little bit higher than spot due to the time value of money for 100 ounces of gold between now and delivery uh, at the beginning of June. Not to confuse you, but that's just how these things work. Let's look at six month daily candlestick chart for gold to drill down a little bit further. As you can see, the candlesticks, which were going straight up for several weeks over the last two weeks, have been a bit more sideways, but still edging higher. Now, last Friday, just before uh, Iran struck Israel, intraday in anticipation of that happening, gold punched as high as 2448 in the New York session before closing much lower uh, at about 2380. Now, we have moved sideways to higher since then, but that's the target high now for gold moving forward. 
I put support levels on this chart. So you can see if we do get into a de-escalation of tension, uh, we should see support first at 2350, uh, perhaps 2340, and then again, about $100 lower at 2240. So these are the levels uh, that I see gold moving down to if uh, we do see a real de-escalation of tension, which may not happen, of course. Uh, upside, once we get over 2450, that opens the door straight to 2500. So that's what I see in gold. In silver, uh, we're seeing a similar chart uh, with silver moving you know, substantially higher over the last couple of weeks, getting a little tentative over $28 an ounce. Uh, the May contract for, for silvers hit a high of 28.71 on the close. So silver's playing some catch up here. It's still under $30 an ounce, which makes it cheap. Basis gold at uh, close to $2,400. I'm raising my target. I used to say silver should be $35 an ounce. Now I think it should be $40 an ounce. So there's still a lot of room to the upside for silver to play catch up to gold. On a daily candlestick chart, you can see, like gold, silver punched up to as high as $29.90 a week ago on the eve of that uh, Iranian salvo of cruise missiles and drones. Uh, but it didn't close over $29. It's touched against it uh, on the New York market close, but not over that. So that's the, uh, the target for silver is $30 uh, moving forward with resistance at 29 and support at 28. Right now we're back up to the top of that trading range between 28 and 29, about 28.75 today on the close. So silver's looking good. Relative to gold, silver still remains cheap uh, with gold at 23.90 and silver at 28.75. The gold to silver ratio is 83.13 to one, which still puts it at the high end of the range. Uh, so silver's got a better profit opportunity, uh, but gold will continue to lead as it has been doing. Uh, so that's the technical analysis for gold and silver. Looking at the vintage coin market, uh, the $20 St. Gaudens in Mint State 65 condition looks especially attractive today, trading at under $2,800 in volume per coin. This represents a premium over gold content at 19.5%. Uh, let's look at the premium and price chart. Uh, this is a chart that we publish on our website. We're the only ones that do this. This goes back 10 years. And you can see off to the bottom right in pink, the premium today is a little bit under 20%, which matches the low premium we saw just before COVID exploded uh, or just as COVID exploded in March of 2020. Uh, the gold price moving higher then pushed the premium low, just like we're seeing today. But the premium has been higher than 50% twice over the last several years. In fact, the premium, which is 19.5% today, was 55% in January of 2023. Specifically, the Saints in MS65 condition are pretty scarce. There's only 280,000 known survivors today. For all coins graded by PCGS and NGC since 1986, which equals just about 15%. They're in the top 15% of known survivors for all the coins PCGS and NGC have, have graded in, since 1986. So this is a great coin uh, with a lot of scarcity, very popular, trading at an abnormally low premium today. So we are American Gold Exchange. We're a national physical precious mail order business out of Austin, Texas. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Uh, help us spread the word via social media. We appreciate that uh, very much. And as always, without our clients, we wouldn't have a business. There's not a day that goes by that we don't uh, say thank you to our clients for your loyalty and support over the last 25 years. So that's our update. Let's hope these tensions in the Middle East can ratchet down and give everybody a little bit of room to breathe. That would be great. So thank you for your time today. Uh, have a good week.